Welcome back, Devils fans. I'm your host, Ace, here on Running with the Devils, where we are talking New Jersey Devils hockey all year long. Please hit that subscribe button, smash the like, share with a friend. Thank you very much. And I was perusing around the interwebs the other day, and I stumbled across a very interesting article with the headline, Brodeur Talks Goalies, Outlook, and Q&A with NHL.com. And I said, Marty quotes? Love to read them. So I said, wow, let me, let me take a look and see what the great Martin Brodeur had to say. He did an interview with Mike Morial of NHL.com. Headline, Hall of Famer, current New Jersey executive discusses new coach Keith, Canada roster for 2025 Four Nations faceoff. Martin Brodeur believes Jacob Markstrom and Jake Allen could form one of the better goalie tandems in the NHL by season's end. And that's great reassurance for the New Jersey Devils from one of the league's living legends at the position. When Devils general manager Tom Fitzgerald got in the conversation for Markstrom, I was really excited, Brodeur said. Jacob was one of the guys I kind of put in his ear because we needed someone who had that experience, had success, and he was a big boy, he's six foot six in the net. If everybody stays healthy, that's as good a duo you could have in the NHL because these guys won't give up games. They're going to make the other team earn their wins. As a goalie, you don't want to be the reason why you're losing games. You want to be status quo. You want nobody to know you're even there. Look, you don't even have to be spectacular, but just do what you need to do to give the team a chance to win. And with the experience they both bring, I think we were able to get that. There's a little insight into the time leading up to the acquisition of Jacob Markstrom, who looked absolutely phenomenal the other night in a terrible Devils outing in Carolina. Markstrom, I think, is going to be huge for us this year. I've said it since we obtained him. I wanted him last year. I think he's going to be an absolute monster for this Devils club, and I'm ecstatic that we have him. Going back to sometime last season leading up to the stadium series, somebody in an interview, and it may have even been Mike Morial as well, but someone asked Marty who he thought the best five goalies in the league were, and I forget the entire list, but Jacob Markstrom was on that list. And I believe all the other guys you knew were in their long-term homes, or at least for the time being, you know. The Devils weren't going to get Shesterkin or Vasilevsky. Those are two of the other guys he named. And so it seemed like when he put Markstrom in his list, my ears perked up and I said, okay, well, obviously Marty now has shown that he feels really highly about Markstrom. Maybe that's a guy the Devils will pursue because of the whole situation with Calgary and blah, blah, blah. So it turns out he was in Fitzy's ear praising Markstrom and, you know, giving his recommendation that the Devils should pursue Markstrom. And then after the deal fell apart last year, obviously this summer we make the deal, Markstrom's here, and and I'm thrilled. And to the point where Marty says, you just want to be status quo, you <laughs> you want nobody to know you're even there. You know, that clearly was not the case last year. Obviously everyone knew the Devils lost tons of games last year on account of horrible goaltending, and that had to change this offseason. And Fitzy went out, got Jacob Markstrom, and here we are now where – during this season, we're not going to win every game, obviously, but I don't think there's going to be many losses where everyone just points and goes, oh, my God, the goalie was horrible. That's not going to be the case. You know, the most recent Devils loss in Carolina, they got flat out outplayed, and honestly, Markstrom was the only reason they were even in the game. With the goaltending we got last year, we would have lost that game 7-2. to two. So, interesting quotes from Marty early on there. Now they get into Marty's accolades in his career. He led the NHL in wins nine times and finished in the top five on five other occasions during his 22 seasons in the league with the Devils and St. Louis Blues. Oh, it always will kill me, but that little blue stint should have never happened. The four-time winner of the Vesna Trophy awarded annually to the best goalie in the NHL. Brodeur holds league goaltending records for wins with 691, shutouts 125, games played 1,266, and minutes played 74,439. He also won 40 or more games eight times in his NHL career. A three-time Stanley Cup champion with New Jersey, he ranks first in shutouts with 24 and second in wins, 113 behind Patrick Waugh with 151 in Stanley Cup playoff history. NHL.com talked to Brodeur about the Devils and the 2025 Four Nations faceoff, a best-on-best round-robin tournament being held February 12th through the 20th in Montreal and Boston. And there's not much to say, guys. If you've been watching me, you know the great Marty Brodeur is my favorite player of all time. Grew up watching Marty as a kid. Amazing to just see pretty much his entire career and see what he was able to do for the Devils and their organization. You know, they rattle off a bunch of his records here. And they tell you that they intend to talk about the Four Nations face-off. Again, if you've been watching me, you know I love the international best-on-best -best competition. Was so glad that the league is finally going back to the Olympics in 2026 on the lawn. And hopefully your boy Ace is there doing some coverage in Italy. Stay tuned for, for that. That's much further down the road. But the Four Nations face-off is going to be great. It, the four teams that they picked are going to be Team USA, Team Canada, Team Finland, and Team Sweden. Obviously, this is kind of a little shrunken down version, if you will, of the Olympic Games to follow in 2026. But it should be phenomenal. USA should be loaded. Jack Hughes should be 
firmly on the USA roster. Uh, we have a, a couple other guys that could be contenders to play as well. Obviously, Brat should be playing for Team Sweden, as Markstrom should definitely have a chance, and I believe he'll be on the roster. Hopefully, he gets the starting job there. And Hall has a shot at Finland. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. But there will be Devils in the tournament. Uh, I'm pumped for it, and it's only a few months away, so I look forward to that. What do you appreciate most about Markstrom's game? Just that he's an athlete, and while he does have his structure, he doesn't care about getting out of his structure to make a save or do something to just stop the puck. I was telling Fitzgerald during whistles, he goes to the bench when they're cleaning the ice and talks to all his defensemen. He's just proactive. He reminds me a lot of me. If you're out there in a game, you might as well try to communicate and talk and not just stay in your bubble. I think that's what he brings, that energy. I don't know if you saw our first practice in Prague when he stacks the pads during our shootout drill. Things that usually goalies don't do. I think he brings that element. I think he's a goalie who's able to get out of a structure when you're in trouble. I mean, you've got to find a way to stop the puck, and Jacob has that in him, that second effort, third effort, to try to recover from a bad read or whatever it might be. Here's just more about Marty talking about, you know, the demeanor of Markstrom, and it is interesting that he points out that he doesn't just kind of stay in his net and off in his own world during stoppages, that Markstrom will go to the bench, talk to the defenseman, you know, maybe tell them some pointers or things that he's seeing from his angle, and you love to see it. And I did say, even in the summer, aside from the actual amazing goaltending we are going to get from Jacob Markstrom, he is going to be a leader on and off the ice for this New Jersey Devils club, something that I thought they were kind of lacking for the past few years, and now with Markstrom and Dylan and Nason, we, we have real leaders in the room, in addition to the couple guys we already had, uh, that I think is really going to change the culture of this New Jersey Devils club under Sheldon Keefe. Does the makeup of this Devils team with size, grit, speed, and goaltending remind you at all of those successful teams you played for? Look, we have guys that are under contract for a long time, so this is going to be our group for a while. There are new players in their first year, so they're going to grow together. Even some of the older players are still going to grow. We need to learn how to win, and some of them have done it in the past. But we really feel that we hit a lot of things we wanted to hit during the offseason. So, at the end of the day, is it going to work? We'll see. But it's the players who are going to tell us. We put these guys in the best situation possible in our opinion. And very interesting question from Mike. Love the question. I had told you guys in the past couple weeks, you know, after the first few games, and again, I'm not getting ahead of myself, but I did believe coming into the season we were going to be a very good team and be a legitimate threat to anyone in the playoffs, hopefully winning a few rounds or a couple rounds at a minimum. But after the first few games with the change of tempo and a little more intensity and a focus on defensive responsibility with a good defense and a good goalie and some of those depth guys like Nason and Cotter just smashing on people and producing points. I did say that it felt very reminiscent to me of some of those old dynasty Devils teams that did, in fact, win Stanley Cups. And I'm hoping as the season goes on and these guys start to click and get more in a groove that they prove that sentiment to be correct. And I still have that feeling despite a couple bad games. It's still very early on. We're only six games into the season. But I do think... Fitz went out and did address all the areas, you know. He said he wanted to get heavier, edgier, more violent. He did that. The defense got revamped. Markstrom and Nett. Uh, I have a very good feeling about the team. And at least to me, this Devils team is at least more in the DNA makeup of some of those championship teams. And hopefully this year's team could go on and win it all. I mean, wouldn't that be amazing? A Devils Cup and... 2025 New Jersey Devils Stanley Cup champions would be absolutely phenomenal. What have you noticed about how new coach Sheldon Keefe runs practice and the way in which it carries over to games? It's definitely a little more serious than what we did in the past. I think guys are businesslike. They work hard. There's a lot of battle drills, a lot of sprinting to areas. Sheldon is really attentive to details. But again, he's got a new group. He's got to kind of see who he can push, who's going to let go. You've got to make sure as a coach that it's a learning curve too. But so far in training camp and the start of the season, it has been good. And everyone keeps talking about Sheldon Keefe emphasizing play with pace, sprint to pucks, and it seems like the practices are getting a little more intense as well. And I think if you practice well, you will play well. I'm sure there's other you know, people on the other side of the argument that are like, oh, don't waste energy, and you know, the practices shouldn't be hard. But back in, again, I hate to keep making the inferences or the you know parallels here, but Back in the day, the New Jersey Devils dynasty years, the practices were very intense. You could go listen to clips from all the guys on those teams, and they said Scott Stevens was an absolute madman in practice, and he demanded that practice be intense, and you practice like you will play. I'm a big believer in that as well, and the only thing I could use as experience is seeing and hearing what guys on those teams have said about it, and they all said the practices were very intense, and it carried over to the games, and it seems like Sheldon Keefe is implementing a similar kind of philosophy here in New Jersey in his first year as head coach. And hopefully it does carry over to the games and we see it in the standings. 
Is it frustrating for you as a former player who won the Stanley Cup three times to watch the team not qualify for the playoffs 10 of the past 12 seasons? Oh, my God. What a painful stat. Shout out to all my long-suffering Devils fans who have been fans for years and years like myself and even the newer fans who came along somewhere along that terrible stretch we've been having. But, you know, starting in 1995 to win the Cup and then win two more in the next eight years to win three Cups in nine years and then just kind of see what has happened over time it's truly been, you know, depressing at times and painful. And that's why a lot of the old time fans that have seen these championship teams are just so starved to see another one because we did experience the good times. We did experience cups. And for us to have fallen so far from that over the years, it really was a painful thing to see. And hopefully with Sheldon Keefe at the helm now, we are on the way back up. And it seems with the young players and the talent we have in place under contract with some of the guys in the pipeline, that this team should be built to contend for the next four to six years, no doubt. Assuming the goaltending after Markstrom is addressed, which I don't see why it wouldn't be. We have a ton of young guys uh, in the system that are going to step up and try to take the job in the post-Jacob Markstrom era. And if none of those guys pan out, then there's always free agency and trades. That's a problem for you know, another time. We have Markstrom for this season and next. At a minimum, if he plays well, I could see him getting another year or two, depending. And so I'm not too focused on the goaltending question mark post-Jacob Markstrom. Everything else is in place. Young, great defenseman on the blue line. Our core forwards locked up for a long time. So the future is very bright for the New Jersey Devils. I'm just hoping that the ver the very now could also be bright and we could see a cup in the next few seasons would be absolutely beautiful. So Marty goes on to answer the question. It's tough. You play hockey to get in the playoffs. Give yourself a chance to win this thing. Yes, you make money and all that, but it's hockey and we all love playing the game. So when you're not part of the playoffs, it's disappointing. You have to kind of look back at yourself and in management and say, okay, what can we do better to get that team in the playoffs? The players have to look in their mirror too because they're the ones who are on the outside looking in. We knew we were going to take a step back last year. It wasn't going to be easy to replace Damon Severson and Ryan Graves with 20-year-olds out there. We just weren't sure of the goalies at the time either. But now we hit the marks and everything we wanted to hit, so hopefully it's not going to be a question. We want to be in the playoffs every year and hopefully hit one. And, you know, there you have it. It seems like... I mean, we all thought that there could be a rocky road with Severson and Graves departing. I just don't think anyone thought it would be to the extent that it was with Nemitz and Luke in the lineup due to Dougie's injury. It was a lot for them. They played a lot more than they probably should have in their rookie season, and the on-the-job training was painful on some nights. It really was. They both showed flashes of brilliance at times, and there was also those you know painful moments where rookies making rookie mistakes – leading to goals against, and it was unavoidable. And I also think as a result of those guys leaving, that kind of made Siegenthaler's game kind of tank as well. But in the end, like Marty pointed out, they hit the marks. Defense is revamped. Markstrom and net. You got to love the makeup of this team on paper. And so far on the ice, it's looked pretty good. Sitting at 4-2 and two after six games, uh, I just can't wait to see when we're fully healthy and kind of hitting our stride what this team really looks like. What do you consider to be the key point for this team to have success this year? Just being consistent. There will be a game plan, and we have to execute it. We're not always going to win, but I think if you do it over and over, the next thing you know is you start believing how to win and get in the playoffs. Then you won't need to change much. I think you can't have big performances and bad ones. You just have to try to stay level as long as you can and kind of gain confidence from being resilient every single game. Then the game looks the same all the time. We know a little bit of what Sheldon Keefe's game plan is here. Sprint to pucks, play with intensity, play hard, finish your hits. And it's been a winning formula in this league for a very long time, dating back to teams in the 90s, as well as the current day. We see what the Florida Panthers have been able to do, going to the Cup Finals and losing two years ago before getting all the way back there last year and beating McDavid and the Oilers in the Finals. They play a gritty, grindy, heavy game, and it's a great recipe for success in this league, and hopefully the Devils are on their way to perfecting that under Keefe, and I cannot wait for the playoffs. Cannot wait. But interesting points from Marty there as well. Who are some of the goalies you watch today that you respect and appreciate? There's two guys I really like, Andre Vasilevsky and Igor Shosturkin. To me, these two guys are the top goalies in the league with the way they play, their attitude. They want to play a lot of games. They don't worry about their workload. They're just hockey players. They want to play, and that's what I love about them. Markstrom is the same way if you don't tell him he's going to play every game. But these are things that I like about goalies, and these two are pretty good. So, again, two of the best goalies in the league, no surprise. Both Russians, Andre Vasilevsky, Igor Shosturkin, both amazing goaltenders. Both like to play a lot, like Marty did. And Marty always kind of finds a way to not, – not necessarily jabs, but he does – always make references to the amount of games and the workload. Obviously, I've talked about this in depth on the channel 
in the past as well. And, you know, I firmly believe if you have a workhorse goalie that's capable of carrying the load, I don't think there's a reason why you can't give guys 60, 65 games. You know, it doesn't happen too often nowadays. There's maybe a few guys will crack that 58, 60 mark. But, you know, the great Martin Brodeur started 78 games one year, 77, 75. It's well documented. The worst job in the NHL during Marty's whole career was to be a backup goalie for the Devils behind him because he commanded the net almost every single night, and you weren't denying him. You were not telling him no, and he was great. Played back-to-backs regularly. And so I do think the current game with all the, you know, the deep stats and the analytics has gotten away from that. Um, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of these guys aren't happy about it. Some of these top goalies, I'm sure, would love to play more than they're allowed to play. But that's a whole, you know, kind of topic for another day. But Markstrom is a fiery guy. He wants the net as well. And I'm hoping he gets to around 57 to 60 starts this year, I think, would be a great number for him. But it already seems like they're going to rely on Allen a lot. We'll see. That could change as time goes on over the course of the season. But I think 55 starts should be the minimum for Markstrom. I'm curious what people think about that. What are your initial thoughts on the possible composition of Canada's roster at the Four Nations faceoff in February? The deadline is December 2nd. It'll be interesting to see what kind of team they're going to be able to put together. Obviously, there's a lot of talent up front for Canada, but it's a little different on the goalie side. They're going to search. I've spoken to Doug Armstrong, and they have goalies they're talking about. Sam Montebo, Jordan Bington, Stuart Skinner. The goalies out there today are so different compared to when I was there for these Olympic-type events when the choices were between Curtis Joseph, Patrick Watt, Ed Belfour, you name it. It's a lot different now. And again, to the point of the old era of goalies, it is crazy. You know, when I was a kid growing up watching hockey, there was there was a ton of mainstay guys that were at the top of their game. They played a lot, and they were pretty good year in and year out, and they were just kind of like the mainstays. You know, Marty Brodeur, Patrick Watt, Eddie Belfour, uh, Curtis Joseph, Nikolai Hobby Bull, and there was just a ton of guys that were top goalies, and they were good every year. Now it seems the goalies have been de-emphasized because of the amount of games they play. We see more of these tandem situations, and so there is no really any more, for the most part, long running, like long reigning, amazing goalies. Obviously, Vasilevsky, I guess, would be considered one now, um, and Shosturkin probably will be one. But there is no like slam dunks, like Marty pointed out when he was playing. You know, the Team Canada goalies were. Martin Brodeur, <laughs> Curtis Joseph, Patrick Watt, Ed Belfour. I mean, it was just a list of Hall of Famers, living legends at the time. The game has definitely gotten away from that, so it is very interesting to see where they will go in net for this tournament, as well as the Olympics when it comes up next year. But I thought that was a great point by Marty, you know, that you just don't really know exactly what you're getting, and a hot start for somebody might get them on the short list to make the team. In choosing the goalies, do you think it will be solely based on seasonal performance? I think so, because I don't think there's one that's above anybody else right now. You don't have a Roberto Luongo or Carey Price to choose from anymore, so the start of the season for all these goalies will be crucial and will provide a lot for the management part of picking the goalies. But in the end, I'm confident we'll have a good team. And then again, to my prior point, there is no long-running, you know, amazing goalies, and so someone could get noticed and get on the team, essentially, from a hot start to this season. So they basically have you know, the month of October, November to get on the radar, prove themselves. And you might be surprised with some of the guys that make some of these teams based on what they're doing now in this season. It seems like a lot of jobs could be kind of won over during the first two months of the NHL season. Overall, I thought it was a really interesting interview with the great Martin Brodeur. I wish we heard from him more often, but every so often a little article like this comes out. So I thought I would, you know, read it on here and give my thoughts on it. Let me know what you thought in the comments about anything Marty said, anything I said. Obviously, anything, everything New Jersey Devils hockey. We have a big one in Ottawa tonight. The boys looking to bounce back from that rather poor outing in Carolina. Hopefully, they get these two points. Going to be keeping a close eye on one of my favorite non-Devils players in the league, and obviously, that is Brady Kachuk. He is a nasty man. I enjoy watching him play. But hopefully, our New Jersey Devils go into Ottawa, get these two points, and look a lot better than they did the last game. Will be interesting to see if Keith decides to do any tinkering with the lines or if he leaves them the way we saw them last game. I'm personally hoping for the Cotter Jack Hughes connection, and I guess Brat would probably be on the wing, and then leaving Timo Nico and Dawson Mercer for the second line. Very curious to see how that goes. I'm hoping to see some fisticuffs when I'm starved for a good bout. Some fisticuffs is well deserved at this point, but throw anything out there in the comments. Thank you for watching. I love you all. I'll be back soon. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Until next time, friends.
Let's go devil. devil.